everyone, welcome to Mod 25 of Unit 5, Psychoactive Drugs. Here are your learning objectives and your vocab, and we have a lot to get through, so let's get started. What are psychoactive drugs, first of all? So they are chemical substances that alter our perception or our mood, and they work on our brains by tricking them because we have neurotransmitters that they mimic. They mimic our natural neurotransmitters to encourage that reaction in our brain. So there are three categories of drugs that you need to know for our purposes. They are depressants, stimulants, and hallucinogens. So if I go over or if I have listed in the slides the neurotransmitter related to that drug, that means that you should know that. If I don't mention one, then you don't have to know it. Some of these drugs come up a little bit more than others, so just be aware. All right, so first let's go over some key terms. So substance use disorder is continued substance craving and use despite significant life disruption. In the top right corner there, they kind of go over more what exactly that means, if you want to pause and look at that. Um, a tolerance is just needing more and more of a drug to get the same effect. So chasing that first high, the person keeps trying to use more to get that same, to get that same euphoric feeling because their body addiction is just the craving and using of a substance or a behavior like gambling even though it is causing unhealthy situations or problems. Um, and then withdrawal is that feeling when you stop doing something or taking something and your body has this physical dependence on that. So you go through withdrawal symptoms that can be extremely painful and actually sometimes cause someone to relapse because of how pain. So the first category of drugs we're going to talk about is depressants. So when you think depressants, I want you to think depressing the central nervous system or slowing down the central nervous system. So to depress, to slow. Um, alcohol use disorder would fall under this category. It is marked by a tolerance and or withdrawal symptoms and a drive to continue the use of alcohol. So there is a neurotransmitter that you need to know listed here. Um, there have been many studies on alcohol. Um, for our time's sake, I'm just going to kind of go quickly over these. Um, you can read more about these in our textbook. But memory disruption is linked to the use of alcohol um, in rats they look at them and compared to um, human um, teenager age and notice that heavy drinking results in um, slowing down of neurogenesis and cell death. Um, there is also a reduced self-awareness and self-control under the influence of alcohol and Interestingly, my favorite kind of studies on alcohol and other drugs, actually it's not just alcohol, are expectancy effects. So just what we expect a drug to do for us actually like encourages our, us to feel that. Like we feel some of the things we feel because of what our culture has taught us about that drug. And different cultures sometimes teach things slightly different about drugs. And so we learn through and we experience a drug in that way because of cultural and so our own expectations. Another depressant, not super important, so I'm going to go quickly over this one, is barbiturates. Again, they depress the natural, um, the nervous system. I want you to think of a barbiturate is really like a tranquilizer. So if you think of that like a sleeping pill or if you're going in for surgery, something like that. Okay, next is opiates. So they, again, depress our neural, neural activity. And these are especially linked with relieving pain. 
So morphine, for example, they give in hospitals to relieve pain. Um, heroin and codeine are also examples of an opiate. And basically what they do is flood the brain with these artificial opiates. And because we have opiate receptors, our brain is like, oh, cool, I don't need to make endorphins because they're here. And so our body stops making its own natural painkillers, endorphins. And when the person goes to stop taking the drug and goes through with, they go through withdrawal symptoms, it is especially painful with opiates because their body isn't making the natural amount of endorphins. So they don't have the natural amount of painkillers. So their pain level is extremely high um, and that can cause them to sometimes relapse. Okay, next are stimulants. So these are the opposite. They excite the central nervous system. They excite our bodily functions and rev us up. Our pupils dilate, our heart rate increases, blood sugar levels rise, which cause a decrease in appetite. They're stimulating things. So think caffeine. Yes, you coffee lovers. That is a psychoactive drug. Um, nicotine, amphetamines, cocaine, methamphetamines, and ecstasy are all stimulants. So quickly, amphetamines are just drugs that stimulate our neural activity and they cause a boost in our mood and energy and people take them to feel alert or improve athletic performance or lose weight or all of those things. Um, next is nicotine. So it is, again, it's very stimulating. It is highly addictive. Um, many have related it to heroin and cocaine like addict level of addiction, even after like, you know, just using it for a couple weeks, people want to stop, but they can't. Um, and it does the similar things that stimulants do. Cocaine is another stimulant and it's extremely addictive. Again, it is derived from the coca plant and yes, Coca-Cola's original recipe did include coca plant extract. That is not a myth. That's a real thing. Um, it can be snorted, injected, or smoked, and it depletes the brain's supply of dopamine. So dopamine is that pleasure reward neurotransmitter. Um, it also involves serotonin and norepinephrine. Um, but they more often link it to dopamine, even though serotonin and norepinephrine are related as well. Um, the high is very brief with cocaine, um, and then the crash and craving more to kind of fix that lower levels of dopamine, which if dopamine has that pleasure reward feeling, the lack of it, lower than normal amount of it, makes you feel very low. So they look to do it again. Um, methamphetamine, again, it's stimulating our CNS and triggering the release of dopamine. So this high is much longer, eight hours long of euphoria and heightened energy. Um, and over time, our body is like, hey, cool, there's all this dopamine. I don't need to make dopamine. And so our body will not be able to make dopamine as it was before. So that person will go through withdrawals that way. So I've left ecstasy for, ecstasy for last because it is a combo of two categories. It's a stimulant and a hallucinogen. So it produces this euphoric social um, intimacy type feeling where the person feels like they love everyone, they feel connected to everything, everything is wonderful. It's often associated with like clubs because people use it a lot there. Uh, um, and they're, of course, dancing and everything because everything's so wonderful, except um, using this drug even one time can have serious health effects, um, cardiac arrest, severe dehydration causing cardiac issues or other issues. Um, and then the longer term health effects um, include 
um, harm to our body's natural levels of serotonin because ecstasy affects our serotonin. And if you recall, serotonin makes our, is our mood regulator. Um, so it kind of puts it out there in synaptic gap and it floods our system with serotonin, making that, making that feel good high. Um, and that's a three to four hour high with that one. And that one, by the way, is ingested with like a pill. And then the last, oh no, I'm sorry, moving on to um, full on hallucinogen and LSD. So hallucinogens, that category, are anything that distort our perception and they evoke sensory images or the absence of sensory input. Um, so LSD, ecstasy, and marijuana are the three that we need to know. And LSD is the most powerful of those three by far, um, by far. It causes like kaleidoscope of colors, stream of odd shapes, images. Um, it's also known as acid. The, it was originally um, made for possible medical use and um, it just became used recreationally and people, the governments were so concerned about how powerful this drug was um, that it is now a category one drug here in the United States, um, which is the most restrictive drug level we have. Um, there has been like a, a new push in science to allow, because they're not even allowed to use it for research. They're not even allowed to research with it. Um, but now they've kind of been given more um, leeway to use it in research to see if it does have these medical abilities that they think that it does have and other countries that it can help with certain things like cluster headaches. With any hallucination, it actually mimics a near-death experience. So there are kind of like three stages. They go through like seeing like simple geometric shapes, like spider webby type things. They go through next um, like more colorful, meaningful images. Sometimes they're emotionally charged with something they've experienced in the past. And then Finally, sometimes they experience this out-of-body um, feeling. So that's the that's true for hallucinogen, hallucinogenic drugs and near-death experiences. So that's why near-death experiences is a vocab. Okay, so marijuana, our last drug. So the ingredient naturally occurring in marijuana that gives it the high is THC. And that triggers mild hallucinations. This one was this one they classify as hallucinogen, but really it's very it's multiple things. And it's a mild hallucinogen. It produces a euphoria, like some other drugs we've talked about. It produces like the relaxation feeling, like we talked about with all. So it kind of does a lot of dumb. And repeat users actually need less of this drug because it stays in the system for much longer. Um, even though they're not feeling high for much longer, the um, THC in their system lasts there for longer. So, re sorry, many states in our country um, legalized it and for medical use and now more recently for recreational use. There are currently 11 states that have legalized for recreational use. So takeaway, psychoactive drugs are any drugs that alter our perception or mood. They play on our natural neurotransmitters and can mess with that system for us. And they're the three main categories that you should know. Um, they all do similar things, so you can kind of figure out what drug. Sometimes a multiple choice question will say, this depressant, blah, 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 and you can already use process of elimination to figure out some stuff. So be familiar with what neurotransmitter is involved in what drug. And just remember that some of them are a little more tricky to classify. All right, that is, whoo, that was a lot. All right, we'll see you in class and we'll go over this more and I hope this was helpful.